that's a pretty bad snow show. Welcome back to Loom with a Classic, Daily Driving Classic Weekly, where I try to daily drive this 1975 Jaguar XJ6. In today's video, I'm gonna try a few different things to try and improve the compression in one of the cylinders. Cylinder 2 has low compression due to having some water in it for a while with a head gasket issue. So I wanna try a few different methods to see if it makes a difference at all. We're gonna try soaking the rings in ATF for about 48 hours or so. And we're also gonna try an engine flush. So let's see if any of this actually works and can bring the compression level up just even a little bit. It's at about 110 PSI now. If I get 140 or something like that, I'll be really, really happy. So this is the second day after going for a bit of a drive. So it's a day after the previous video. And we had 105 PSI then, and now we're up to 110. Just my daughter here in the background there. So I think that is a great sign. What I'm gonna do now is help it along a little bit. Depressurize it, I'm not gonna drive the car for a couple days. I'm gonna fill up the top of that piston with ATF. Let that sit for a bit. Hopefully that will clean out the uh, rings a little bit. Then I've ordered new oil for this. We'll change out the oil after that has sat, you know, run down. Don't wanna run that into the engine. And then run it for a bit and see if this goes up. It's been 48 hours now since I put the ATF down in here. It's just been sitting and I looked at it yesterday and I could still see a lot of fluid in there yesterday. So most likely, yeah, I hope you can see that. There's a lot of fluid still left in there. So I don't want to um, hydrolock the engine. So I'm going to put a rag over here. Just spin it over with the ignition disconnected to uh, get that most of that out of there. I do expect it to smoke a bit when it starts up. Then I'll start it up, let that smoke sort of settle down, and then I am gonna do a flush of the oil, like we talked about, and an oil change, and uh, then we're ready for more drives, which might not happen right at this moment, but in the next couple of days, I will continue using this car, and we'll see what happens with the compression level in that cylinder. I put a rag over there, I'm just gonna bump the starter first a bit, because most likely, most of it's gonna come up on the first stroke. All right, that went everywhere. All right, well, some cleaning. Hmm. Well, I guess I should have sucked some of that out before doing that. Oh well, most of it shot straight up and actually went pretty much behind the car, so that is pretty good. Okay, that was uh, more violent than I expected. I'm glad I was sitting in the car at least. At least it's just ATF. It's not, you know, not the worst thing in the world. And it didn't really coat the engine that much. It mostly just went behind the car. Let me see if I can get the rest of that out of there. At least that means that the rings were probably not that bad because I didn't pour that much in. I mean, that was pretty much it. I think not anything has really run past, but uh, Let's see if I can get that out somehow. All right, that is enough. I am going to get more rags, clean up my mess, and uh, well, at least it's some sort of rust proofing, and then we'll put the plug back in, start this thing up, and the rest of it should just burn off. Got everything connected back up. Fuel pump is on as well. And... Uh, See if it fires up, it's probably going to be a little bit on the flooded side and completely full of oil in a cylinder at least. Okay, let's go see if there's a smoke show. Oh wow, well, that is a pretty bad smoke show. So uh, we're going to let that clear for a bit, but uh, it's good. I'm going to let it warm up and then see over here, I got some stuff. I'm gonna use this that I've used before, which is Rizlone's engine flush. I've had great success with it before, also with this engine, where I used this and afterwards the oil pressure just got a lot higher than it was before. So I'll use this one more time. It actually also says 
that it can help with uh, stuck rings. So we'll see. I've used on a couple parts and I'm very happy with the product. But first, I am going to let this thing warm up to see if the smoke will clear. But walk out here and see if I can show you guys. That's a pretty bad smoke show. I ran it for about 15 minutes or so, just sitting here idling. Uh, it took about 10 minutes for smoke to clear. And what you're seeing here is just some of the ATF that got all over the exhaust. So I'll have to clean the engine bay a little bit later, but uh, if this works, it's definitely worth it. So I've shook up the can here. One can is for about three to six liters of oil capacity. I know this thing is more than that. However, I already have very, very thin stuff in there, thin oil. It's only 10W30. I'm running out to flush it out. So I don't want to thin it out too much. And yeah, these engines, so they run a much, much thicker oil than modern stuff, so I wouldn't want to put two bottles in there, at least. But uh, I'm going to add this to the engine, then you're supposed to let it sit and idle for 15 minutes. You can alternate the, um, actually the engine revs too, if you want to. So um, I will do that if it doesn't end up ticking a lot uh, with this stuff in it. But this stuff really does work. I have a video, I can link it down below, where I used this on a friend's S-Type V6, which was knocking like crazy due to something with the variable valve timing not getting oil to it. And we poured this in, and within five minutes later, it started sounding like a new engine, and now we change the oil regularly. And that thing has run close to eight, what is it, like 8,000 kilometers later, and it's still running beautifully. So uh, I'll put the cap back on, then we'll fire this thing up and set the timer for 15 minutes. Firing it back up. And we're gonna see, we're pretty much up to temperature, so I mean, the oil is not fully warmed up because it is going up there. With this fin stuff and I drove for a while, oil pressure was down around that line there at idle. So we'll see. I'll check the time now and report back in about 15 minutes unless something really drastically happens. It's been about five minutes, running nicely. I pulled up the rev for about 2,000 RPM for a little bit and I was idling again. And back here, I can show you that we have no smoke anymore. All of that has cleared. We do have nice, strong exhaust pulses. So it seems to be running well gonna prepare um, a drainage tray to drain out the oil once it's you know, really really hot to get any gunk or mess out of it. This stuff is really good at getting stuff out from the sump as well. And then we're filling it up with Castro Classic 20W50 and then we filter as well. 50 minutes are up, still holding good temperature. Oil pressure is way way down but let's definitely shut this thing down. We're not gonna torture it anymore. This is a little bit of an extreme thing, I know, but I sort of think I can try because I need to try and get the compression levels a little bit more even and also flush things out. It was running really, really well. The only thing I did notice after about 10 minutes, got a little bit of a haze behind the car, so a little bit of oil smoke. So um, definitely something going on. I mean, it's very thin stuff in there, so. Just a little bit of a haze, maybe that is the stuff going up, cleaning out the piston rings. I do not know. Or maybe some ATF left in the exhaust I got warmed up. I don't know, because I had so much in there. There was a chance I did pump some out into the exhaust. Which, I mean, that will burn off. Not really an issue. But um, let's see what happens. I'm going to crawl on the other side, empty out the oil. Careful, because it's going to be very, very hot and very thin stuff coming out. Then I have an old case, I think I have a liter left of 20W50 Castro, so I'll pour that in to flush out whatever is left in here. And then we'll pour in the 20W50 Castro and I'll change the filter once everything has cooled down a little bit. Let's see how thin this stuff actually is. And I really just don't want to burn myself, so I'm probably going to let the yeah, go into to there. And you see it's very, very dark coming out, and I'm expecting there to be more moisture in there. Well, I'm going to put a jack on the other side of the car to raise the side up so it pours out more easily. 
That's what's so great about this car. You actually don't need to jack this car up to change the oil. You get to filter from up top as well. I guess you can hear just how thin that stuff is pouring out. So I think this has hopefully done some good. I switched to a different pan for the last of the drain. And you can see this is the first stuff that came out. Just how much moisture was left in that oil. And to recap, if you don't remember from the last video, I mean, there was a lot of uh, water contamination in the old oil. So I've been running just for a week now, a thin sort of flushing oil, or not really flushing oil, but I like to call it that. It's just 10W30 to try and get all of this stuff out. And I haven't lost any coolant. So there's no new water getting in there. It's just clearing out all the oil stuff. That's also why I'm doing the engine flush. I would have done that even if I didn't have the compression issue on cylinder two. But uh, we're gonna let that continue drain out when it's pretty much stopped to a drip. I'm gonna pour in more oil to flush it out. I think I actually still have a little bit of 10W30 left, so I might actually pour whatever left of that in there, let that run out, and then take the 20W50, pour that in, let that run out. And then once I'm happy with that, we'll fill it up. But you can just see how much moisture is left from before. I, mean, I don't have anything to stir it with this time, but you can really see that this was a good idea to flush out this engine. I already poured through the last of the 10W30 I had. That came out nice and clean, but I just want to make sure none of that left in there. So I have some 20W50 that I like to use on these engines. And yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that pour one-handed, but I'll pour some of that in there. Probably not all of this. This thing's about half full, but maybe a liter or so in there just to flush everything out and uh, then we should be good to go and that's coming out really nice and clean now and i can really tell how much thicker this stuff is because i mean it is cold but it was also cold 10w30 i poured in so this stuff is a lot thicker and of course as it should be so i'll let that drain out and i'll probably do something else for maybe 40 minutes or so I'll let all this cool down so i can take the filter out. I don't like to add, you know, oil to a hot engine, you know, flushing out like this, not an issue, but filling up a hot block of cold oil. I mean, probably it's not, you know, terrible for it, but I don't like to do it at least. And also I don't want to burn myself down there again, that filter off. So I'll report back to you guys in about 45 minutes or so. Then we'll have a new filter on, put the sun plug back in. It will be all filled up with new oil and we'll start it up, see what the oil pressure is and just see how it runs filter is changed now and i'm just adding some clean oil this will be the final oil change for now there should be sufficient oil now to start it up i have replaced the filter as well but i haven't really pre-filled it just a tiny bit but we're seeing it's about halfway between minimum and maximum so it should be enough to fire it up and see what the oil level is and also what the oil pressure is i'm quite curious to find out Watch the oil pressure gauge there. And please build some oil pressure. There we go. And now slightly below 40. Going up to 40 now. shut that down check for leaks check the level and then we'll go for a little drive let's go for a brief little test track started up very nicely oil pressure is coming up i mean this thing doesn't have the best oil pressure in the world but i have a feeling that it is higher than before and it's still climbing i've never seen it go much past 40 like it's done now and it is not completely cold now i've run the engine for a while I mean, I could see that when it was very cold outside, but not at this. So um, the other thing I have noticed that is already a lot more quiet. I think a lot more quiet than it's been before, even with the correct oil. So uh, maybe something else cleared up. Not really sure. Let's see if we can uh, get out before the rain, but I think we're going to get caught in a thunderstorm, which not that bad. The car needs a wash anyways. 
but it might make filming and recording a little difficult. So far, everything really feels fine. The car is finally quiet. I mean, it's hard to remember back from the previous oil change. This engine is always a little bit on the noisy side. Um, something is going on in here, comes the rain. Uh, so I hope you guys can still hear me. We've had thunderstorms a lot now. But basically the point of this test drive is I just want to warm everything up once. Uh, I'm not going for an extended drive, just really down the mountain and up again. Warm everything up, let it cool down after the drive. And then tomorrow or the day after, I'm going to come out and do a cold compression test again. Just to see if we've already made a difference with what we tried. Uh, I mean, I think if we've had made a difference, I think it is going to continue to get better as I drive the car. And then I will, you know, maybe report back in a few months or so on the compression. But it'd be interesting to see if this has actually made a difference with just these two things. Alright, I think I can turn off the camera now for a bit and concentrate on the drive. Because you guys are probably not going to hear anything from this rain. And uh, I'll report back when, when I'm on my way back. We're almost back at the house now and I've been for maybe about half an hour drive. So this is the oil pressure idle, which is not bad, around 20 psi, something like that. But I'm gonna put into lock the transmission into second and drive here and we'll show what it is a little bit higher RPMs. The car is running well except I do have a slight stumble right when I take off. But I am still running on the old uh, gasoline. Once it gets a little bit lower, I'll fill up with new stuff, go for a drive, and then we'll check over carburetion, possibly um, see if something's going on, maybe. But let's see what the oil pressure is. And I'm on a private road here, so it's no problem with filming and driving. I'm going to meet anyone. But you're seeing the oil pressure is coming up. And I was seeing before at about 2,000 RPMs, a longer drive, it would go up to about 40. And before it would need about two and a half thousand RPMs to come up near that. So I would say we have better oil pressure now, at least with that engine flush. Sorry about the noise, but it is raining like crazy. Hope you can still hear me. I'm back from the rain and from the drive. You can see the wax still get on the car. And it is running very, very nicely. It is very, very smooth at the moment. And very quiet, oil pressure is great. Let's see if we have any smoke out the back. And we have no smoke at all. It does sound like it's running a tiny bit rich. So I will have a look at that after it gets some new fuel and it's driven a little bit longer. But now I'm gonna let this thing cool down at least overnight. And then we'll do a full compression test again that's the figures that we have before so we can compare the results and hopefully cylinder 2 has uh, gone up a bit. I've been curious once again, I don't know why, I should have gone inside a long time ago, but I found the issue with the carbs though and it's very simple. It's probably just that little nut there needs to be tightened or adjusted or the little clamp here because when I open the throttle over here, the rear carb you see, that moves, but not the front one. And if I get a little more, both move. So that explains it, that when I, when I stand still and I just put my foot down pretty quickly, it stumbles and then catches and then runs well. So um, that is very easy to adjust. I will do that when everything is cold because, yeah, you just burn yourself adjusting things down there. But uh, that is easy. They are balanced and everything else is fine. And the spark plugs look nice so the mixtures uh, should be fine. So at least I found what that issue is. And now I promise I will go inside and tomorrow we'll see what the compression is. It's the next day and I'm performing the compression test. I've already done most of it. I'm doing a dry and wet. I've done them all dry first. Got the last cylinder to do here wet. So we'll see what the results are and then go through that. So far, it's, um, I mean, no miracles have happened, but um, I do have some ideas of things we might be able to try in the future, or maybe I'm just gonna live with it. We'll see, but let's do the last cylinder there, cylinder six. Let's see, so that is 
135. So here are the results from the test. So the numbers on the left here are the dry ones, and then there's the wet ones on the right. So cylinder one is 150, cylinder two is 90, cylinder three is 145, four is 145, five is 155, and six is 130. So if we don't look at cylinder two, the engine's pretty healthy. They're all pretty close. I mean, that's a little off cylinder six, but really, really not that bad. And then if we look at the wet ones, cylinder one is the one that went up the most to 170. The other ones only went up about 10 or 5 PSI. So the two went up 10 PSI, the other one just went up about 5. So um, rings are very good in all the other ones. If you have a very low one and the rings shoot up or and then it shoots up very high when you put oil on the rings, then you know the rings are not sealing. If there's pretty much no difference, uh, it's pretty much valves if it's low. So um, I put only three squirts of oil in each, so that is not too much, and it should be just enough. But yeah, it's cylinder two got the 90 psi there. So um, yeah, could of course still be some other things, but uh, I'm gonna put the plugs back in, start it up, um, let it run to uh, get rid of all the oil that's in there, and then. Um, We'll try and come to some sort of conclusion. So those weren't really the perfect results I was looking for, but it was a fun experiment anyways. And the thing about it, the car doesn't run that badly. I mean, it probably would be a little more smooth if I had better compression cylinder too. And I think what I did, I didn't really harm anything, but I probably just removed a bit of the carbon that was increasing compression a bit in that cylinder because it went from about 100, 105 down to 90. Um, I will, of course, just continue driving this car. It's not using any water at the moment, but one really good thing is we're not pushing any oil out of the dipstick tube anymore, and I drove it pretty hard yesterday. Uh, locked in second for a while, and you know, pulled it up sort of, not full Italian tuna, but a little bit. Still being a little bit careful with this engine. And, well, the other thing it could be, of course, is maybe I got the valve clearances wrong on cylinder number two, and maybe that could help out a bit. When I had the head off, I did grind the or lap the valve, so they should all seal very well. And I did pour fluid into each of the chambers, let it sit for a while, and it did not drain. But um, I think there's still really fun experiments here we're trying. And the thing about this, we talked before, this engine, it is not in its first, you know, flush of youth. It is old. It's worn. I don't know how many miles are on it, but the thing is, it still runs all right. And I mean, I would normally say that you want about 150 PSI, at least, in one of these engines. And uh, yeah, there should all be no difference of 10%, you know, the standard sort of rule. But this thing still runs, and it might be a bit of an oil consumer now. I don't know. Those rings might be damaged. There might be score or something. And it might become an oil consumer now. I don't know. It doesn't smoke out the back or anything now. It did a little bit when it did the motor flush, but uh, that is uh, pretty normal. I've seen it happen to other cars as well and to other people on YouTube when they use engine flush. And, um, but I don't think that harmed anything because the oil pressure now is pretty fantastic. It's a lot better than before. And just one last thing that we could do, we'll start this thing up. And I'll show you guys what the oil pressure is from cold, and we'll see if that is a lot higher than what it has been before. Let's fire it up now cold to see what the oil pressure is. It's usually just around 40, never really goes above that. So if it goes any higher than that, that would be really exciting. Even though I know, yes, warm oil pressure is the most important. I've already seen that, but it's just be fun to see. Also, I want to clear it out because it's probably flooded, it's full of oil and other things. So let's see how it goes. Okay. And smoothing out now. Still climbing a little bit. I mean, these gauges are very slow. I can rev it. Good. So that is really, really great news here. 
All right, so I call the oil flushing part of this a success. It seems like there's probably some gunk somewhere around the engine, maybe around the oil pressure release valve or something that has caused the low oil pressure because it seems to go up every single time I change the oil, uh, the last two times at least, and I used engine flush. So that might be something in the future to take that valve apart and see if maybe I can clean it. Maybe I can get it even better, but I'm actually pretty happy with the oil pressure at this moment. Once again, this engine is definitely not perfect at all, but it's just a fun experiment and I want to keep driving this car as long as possible. But I think in the future, there will be probably a replacement engine, either a restored engine, I'll buy a good one and restore it, or a good secondhand one if I can find one. But we will see what happens. I'm still not 100% convinced about the case seal. It's only been about two weeks now and... Um, We'll see what happens. A lot of people have said that it's worked and they've said I had it five years ago and it's still fine. There's people said I had it 10 years ago and it's still fine. So we're gonna see see what happens, see how good it is. If if it happens, I will keep you guys updated. I think the next thing on this car now is I am going to start monitoring more closely the water level. I just check now that hasn't gone down a lot, but I'm gonna measure it in the expansion tank, monitor it and um, keep you guys posted. So maybe next month or something, um, you know, we're just beginning of August here now. So maybe in the um, middle of August or a little later, we'll get an update on that. Now we'll just continue using this as my daily driver. Whenever I need to go somewhere, I'll take this car and we'll see what happens. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. And thank you so much for watching. And once again, I'm Adam and this was Lumifer Classic. I'll see you soon.